Hold on to your edges, guys and girls. I'm going in. Hi, and welcome to Dr. K Explains It All. My name is Dr. K and I'm a GP based here in lovely London and I'm your handy guide, giving you all the tips and information that you need so you can make better decisions about your health. Today's video explains all about this worrying and embarrassing thing that nobody wants to talk about. No, not the fact that you're addicted to Cheetos, but it's something that we see quite a lot in the black community. It's the case of the disappearing edges or to give it its medical term, traction alopecia. You might have heard about traction alopecia before, or you might not. Either way, pull up a chair and let me explain. The word alopecia is just a general medical term for hair loss, whatever the cause. Traction alopecia is more specific and refers to the pattern of hair loss that results from repeatedly pulling on the hair. It tends to affect the thin, fine hairs that are usually along the front or the sides of your hair, but it can happen anywhere where your hair is being pulled too tight. The main reason for traction alopecia is when your hair is being pulled too tight. The commonest reason for this is doing hairstyles that are too tight that pull on the hair for a prolonged period of time. This is because pulling on the hair shaft repeatedly over time can make it quite weak and brittle and more prone to break. But Dr. K, why? I never pull on my hair, I hear you ask, and I still get this. Why, why, why? The thing a lot of people don't realize is that black hair or Afro-Caribbean hair is actually a lot more delicate and fragile than it looks. People tend to assume that just because it's quite curly or coarse in appearance that it can take a lot of damage or styling. Actually, our hair is probably the weakest out of all the types of hair out there. Not only is the fact that genetically our hair is more weak and fragile than we think, but we are also quite harsh in our styling and this is the extra bit that makes things worse for us. The extra bit that we do is that we tend to use a lot of chemicals as well to process and style our hair. So things like chemical relaxers and perms and these work by further weakening the structure of the hair. So we're even more at risk of causing damage and breakage to our hair. And then we wonder why our hair is falling out and our edges are thinning. It's no wonder really, and it's becoming a more common problem with one out of every three black women suffering from some type of traction alopecia. So I'm trying to look out for you, sis. I want you to do better. So if I'm gonna go into this in more detail, what styling practices are causing damage and breakage to our hair? What do I mean? The first culprit is braids and cornrows. Think back, how many times have you gone to go and get your hair done and you've gone to get your hair braided and the braids are so tight, you get a headache and you can feel all the little tiny baby hairs being scooped up to make them neat and tidy into these cornrows. This is where it comes from. Those little hairs along your edges are not really designed to hold that much weight and traction. And especially if you're doing these hairstyles without giving your hair a break, this is what tends to cause the thinning edges. Not only that, I know the whole protective styling and wearing things like extensions, weaves, and wigs, that's now come into trend as well. Wigs especially, I know they can be a protective style, but if you're not taking care of your wigs or installing them properly or looking after your own hair, you're not really doing yourself much good. In the black community, we seem to have an obsession with getting our edges laid. And as much as it looks good to the eye and it's pretty, this is actually also part of the problem. We're using a lot of harsh chemicals and ingredients and we're very aggressive in terms of styling and laying them flat. And again, some people even glue their wigs to their edges and they're not very careful about how they use the glue. And I just kind of cringe whenever I think of this because all you're doing is really just thinning down your edges. And if you happen to combine these damaging styling practices with using chemical relaxers and perms, you're just doubling the amount of damage that's been done. 
even the way you style your hair day to day using heat tools, hair straighteners, blow drying, all these things can cause damage. And it doesn't stop there. Even the way you choose to style your hair day to day can affect whether or not you get traction alopecia. So if all the time you're constantly wearing ponytails and you're putting your hair in really tight ponytails or you're wearing your hair in a particular style and you're not changing styles, then over time that can also cause that area to become thinner because the hair in that area can only take so much pressure before it starts to break and thin out. Those who have dreadlocks as well, especially if they're not taking care of them properly, this is another key thing that can cause breakage and traction alopecia. The good news is that it is reversible, but only if something is done about it early on. This is not the time to stick your head in the sand and ignore the first signs, because if you do, all that will happen is that the hair thinning and the hair loss may then become permanent. And at that stage, it becomes way more expensive and time consuming to fix. So I'm going to wrap up this video by giving you some quick styling tips on what you can do to correct the first warning signs of traction alopecia. I'm going to follow up this video next week with another video talking all about the more focused treatments for people with established traction alopecia. So that one will give you more detail about any medical treatments, hair transplants, any kind of creams and things that may be worth it. But I'm going to finish this one talking about the quick, simple styling things that you can do right here, right now. So the first thing is that if you notice the first few signs of thinning around your edges or your hairline is to stop whatever hairstyle that's causing it. So if you're having your hair in box braids or cornrows or doing some other particular style that's causing the edges in that area to be thin, you need to take your braids out or cornrows out immediately. I know it sounds me melodramatic, but really the sooner you stop doing that, the better you will feel. It's not to say that you can't have cornrows or braids, but my tip would be not to have the hairstyles for longer than a couple of weeks, maybe three to four weeks at the most, and change your hairstyles frequently. Instead of wearing high ponytails or tight ponytails all the time, try and have looser styles. So either let your hair just hang down, or if you are going to have a ponytail, make it a really loose ponytail that doesn't put as much pressure on the edges. Bonus tip is also to be careful about the type of hair bands that you use. Don't use the ones with the metal, metal bits and don't use elastic rubber bands. Anything that's going to snag or further pull on your hair is a no-no. If you are going to have braids or conros, then apply the Goldilocks principle. What's the Goldilocks principle? That's something I've just come up now. And it means don't make the braids too thin and don't make them too thick in the middle is just right. So what am I talking about? The ideal width of your braids and conros should be around the same width as a fingertip or a finger width. Now, at least at this part, not at that part. So maybe, uh, you know, half an inch in terms of width, that's my comfort level. Obviously find what works for you. But the thing is not to have them so thin and especially going really into the small fine hairs at the beginning here so that they pull so tightly and don't have them too thick as well because that puts a lot of weight and pressure on the hair and it's too much for the hair follicles to take. So just try and go somewhere in the middle. That's my tip. Another thing with having braids done is when you do go to your hairstylist or your hairdresser, tell them to leave out and skip the edges and some hairdressers are better at this than others whenever I go and put braids in my hair I've known my hairdresser now for a long time so she does it without me even having to tell her but the first couple of times going to your stylist you might have to just be quite persistent and firm and say leave out the edges please just do the main bulk of the hair because some people have this obsession with capturing every little hair and you don't need it and that's what causes the problems we have a conundrum folks that is you have to pick a side you either have to have braids and conrows 
or using chemical relaxers. Try not to combine both. So what I talked about earlier about doing braids, which weakens the hair and then putting chemicals and relaxers, which further weakens the hair. And then you get this combination and you get breakage and thinning. So you have to pick a side. That means, are you going to have your hair chemically relaxed and processed? If that's the case, then you really should avoid doing box braids, cornrows, twists, and because that's going to further cause damage. Or am I mainly into having my hair in twists, braids, cornrows? So you have to decide which one is for you. If you combine both, that's where we have a problem. My advice would be to avoid using the chemicals. And nowadays with all the styling things and tips that's out there, we don't have to. And by the same token, try and keep the amount of heat that you use on your hair to a minimum. Or if you absolutely must use hair straighteners or dryers, then use and choose the lowest heat setting possible. At night, really important how you take care of your own hair and how you wrap your hair so you can get all these satin bonnets and satin pillowcases to avoid the trauma and the rubbing that can further worsen hair thinning and my last tip which may be a bit controversial for some people is maybe to consider cutting your hair especially if your hair is quite long so traction alopecia is caused by hair being pulled too tight and if your hair is longer then you've got more room for the hair to be pulled. So by trimming or cutting your hair shorter, then that reduces a lot of the tension that can happen from traction alopecia. Obviously, it depends on your lifestyle, you know, your work, how comfortable you feel and what works for you. But again, that might be another thing to consider, especially if you're wearing things like wigs or protective styling anyway. So again, that's done for this week. Those are my tips. I'm not a qualified hairdresser or a hairstylist. I'm just giving these tips from a medical perspective. If you found them useful, feel free to try them out. And if you have your own tips for dealing with traction alopecia, then comment below and see if you can help somebody else out with your own tips. Stay tuned for next week where I go into the nitty gritty talking about the medical treatments, hair transplants, and what else you can do if you do have traction alopecia. Same time next week, Sunday at 5 p.m., guys. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.